Hey guys, welcome to the video. This is a weekly segment where I cover some general news and or information on what's gone down over the past week or so in the hacking, modding, and pirate scenes. It's pretty much a general summary of stuff that's out there already regarding things like updates and new releases of major homebrews, hacks, apps, emulation, or just news in general. Stuff that is geared more towards the general public and or the end user that may be informative, useful, or even just entertaining. And while there's a lot out there, the topics I go over here usually fall in line with what this channel is all about and with what our subscriber base finds helpful, useful, or just entertaining. If you want to know more in detail about these segments, all you need to do is look down in the description for a brief summary. And as a reminder, any and all all of the links that we will be covering in this segment, of course, will be posted down in the description. So let's go ahead and let's get started with this week's video. And before we start with our first topic, I can't stress enough, make sure you like the video, guys. It really helps me out in terms of keeping me motivated and inspired to continue to do not only these segments, but of course, other stuff with the channel. Even if I report something in these segments that, you know, might make you frustrated or you may not like or just pisses you off. Remember, I'm just bringing you the news. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't dislike the video because of something that's way beyond my control. And there's a reason why I'm mentioning all of this right now. Because starting off with the PS4, uh, here we go again. Last week, Sony released an official firmware update to 7.0 for the system. And shortly thereafter, apparently there was a leak of the decrypted file system and kernel for 7.0. Now, this was reported by Zor, who is a developer in the PS4 scene. And he confirmed that apparently the hack is a very powerful one and provides hope for the future. And for the, you know, general public and, and user, that's exactly what this means is just let's keep our fingers crossed. It means that there probably already is a Kexploit for 7.0 or one in development and possibly the old Kexploit and I say old but the last one that was working that was in private that worked on apparently 6.5 and 5.1 and even 6.72 may have been updated to work with 7.0 or maybe this is just something that's brand new. Either way, I don't think we're going to be seeing anything anytime soon uh, for uh, the PS4 that is even remotely current. And that brings us here to this post over at PSX Hacks, where some developers on the PS4 scene kind of chime in on the future of jailbreaks and exploits for the system. And you can look over this whenever you have time. There's your usual, you know, developer jargon back and forth here or posts, whatever. But basically, in a nutshell, the message that's being conveyed to everybody is the same one that has been conveyed already for the last year and a half since 505. And that's just be patient and wait. And there's another page here with more information regarding the 7.0 stuff and some of the decrypted stuff as well. So you can come over and check it out. I know it's frustrating, guys. I feel that frustration right along with you. But, you know, it is what it is. What can we do? That's why I mentioned the thing about the thumbs up <laughs> earlier, because I know how people feel when it comes to this uh, PS4 stuff. But again, you know, it's things that are out of our hands, out of my control. And uh, the best thing we could do is move on to something a little bit more cheerful regarding the PS4. And that would be the Manafin emulator for a PS4 that's been released by developer Marcus95. Now, I think I reported on this in the last segment last week, and he was working on this one and open bore. So this one now has officially been released. Obviously you need to have a PS4 that's modded on 505. The rare file is right here and I'm assuming the package file is in there and you can just install the PKG file like any other 
you can see here the slew of uh, old school systems that are supported here. You got your usual stuff like NES, SNES, the various Game Boys, the various Sega systems like Game Gear, Genesis, the Master System, uh, even the PS1 is here. There is a Sega Saturn, but it's experimental. Don't get all excited. Unfortunately, spoiler alert, this is never going to work on the PS4 because Sega Saturn emulation doesn't work on anything except maybe a decent PC, and even then it could be a headache. But yeah, you have a bunch of others on here. Uh, there's even a tutorial video down here at the bottom to show you how to install it. So if you've been itching for RetroArch to make its appearance on the PS4, this may very well hold you over and scratch that itch until it does get released. So if you're a big fan like I am of all that good old fashioned retro stuff, then this might be worth giving a shot on your modded system. And moving on into the Switch and real quick, a public service announcement type thing. There was an update last week to the firmware. It's now on 9.0.1. However, it seems like all the homebrews and apps and custom firmwares and things like that that were designed for 9.0.0 work just fine on the newer 9.0.1 update. So there's no need to panic or whatever. The custom firmware works. It seems like all the apps work and everything. So if it worked on 9.0, it will work on 9.0.1 just fine. And lastly, for the Switch, there's been an update to Tinfoil. It's now on 5.00, and it seems like the only thing that was added on here is support for the NSZ file format. Now, this is a pretty big deal because this is something that's gaining a lot of traction. You can compress NSP files to NSZ, and this compression allows the files to become up to 80% smaller, which is significant on saving space. If you want to know more about NSZ, you can come here to the GitHub page, but a fair warning that as of right now, there isn't like a front end, a user-friendly GUI type program that allows this compression to happen. You have to go through Python and use it. Uh, it it's not too complex, but it's definitely something where if you're not familiar with Python. Uh, yeah, it might be a little bit foreign to you. It's something that I'll probably end up doing a tutorial on here real soon. But Tinfoil, I think it's the only um, NSP installer right now that supports this format. So if you're interested in getting it, by all means, go ahead and snag the update right from here. And shifting over to the PS3, there is a new update to PS3 Hen. It's now on 2.4.0. This came out about seven days ago, so you probably already know about it. When it came out, it was around the same time I was doing last week's segment, and I already had things sorted, and I was uh, making the video and all that stuff, and editing, and that video was already too long, and it was too late, and that's why I didn't include it. Uh, so I figured I'd wait till this week, so you probably already know about it. If you are updating HEN and you are on 2.0.2 HEN or later, then you can click on the second updating HEN tab right here, which most of you are on something that's later than 2.0.2. .2. Click on spoiler and you can see how to easily update your version of HEN to 2.4. If you're installing HEN for the very first time, you can click on the installing and setup tab and there's various methods there. On the release here, you can see the change log. And I think that these changes and fixes and whatnot are definitely substantial enough to warrant updating to the 2.4. So if you're on something older like 2.3.2 or whatever, then I think it's definitely worth updating to ensure that uh, you maximize the full potential of your PS3 hen. And over at PS3 Brewology, we see a few updates to some popular apps. Showtime gets updated to 5.0.612. If you're not familiar with Showtime, you can come here and just read up kind of a brief summary on what it is. This is just one self file that goes inside of Multiman itself. Click on release notes and it will show you where to put the file. And then of course you can come here and download it. Multiman, which hadn't been 
officially updated in years now has seen two recent releases. This latest one goes to 4.85.1. Yes, I know there's zero there's, but I am ignoring them because they serve no purpose. It's just developers way overthinking things too much for their own good. That's my mini rant. Anyway, click on it and you'll see here in the release notes that this has been updated to work for the latest PS3 Hen. And again, you can come here and download this latest version. The last one, 4.85, uh, wasn't Hen friendly, but this one apparently is. And then there's the Hen Toolbox, which also has been updated to work with um, the latest version of Hen 2.4.0 and HFW 485. And some other stuff here I already went over in the last video, but a notable mention is that Red Arch has been updated to version 2 of 1.7.9. In the last video, I, uh, I told you that probably version 2 was going to come out soon because now they're updating these regularly and there it is. So if you are on HEN, you're going to want the KEX version or if you're on regular CFW KEX, if you're of course on CFW DEX, then this is what you want right here. And this next bit of news, I think is more directed towards us PS4 owners waiting for that next exploit to get released and thinking it's never going to. Well, there's been an exploit found for the PS2. That's right. The top selling 19 year old console has had yet another exploit found for it. This one by developer Turk. I'll put a link in the description uh, where you can read all about it here at GBA Temp. I don't think this is a really simple just copy and paste type deal. I think this one involves uh, a little bit of work, but that at this point really isn't the point itself. It's the fact that we have these consoles that are so old and developers are still finding ways to hack them. This isn't, of course, the first exploit for a PS2 console. There's various ones that already exist. But this just gives us hope that if we don't see something for the PS4 within the next year or three or four, maybe in the next 13 or 14, eh, we might get something. And we're going to wrap up this segment with some Apple news. Yeah, something I seldomly cover, but of course we have to broaden our horizons. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago, there was a jailbreak that affected millions of iOS devices, pretty much anything with the Apple A5 to A11 chip in it. This pretty much uh, covers everything from the iPhone 4 S, which came out back in 2011, all the way to the iPhone X released in 2017. Now this jailbreak is named Checkmate, which I happen to love and love the way they spelled it also, but it's aptly named because, well, it's unpatchable. There is nothing Apple can do to fix it. Now, hacker Luca Tedesco recently, as of a few days ago, which he's also goes by the name Cordy or UIP. UIOP, by the way, is a dev thing. Anyway, um, he posted a video here on his Twitter account, which shows him running a modified version of the Checkmate jailbreak on current iOS. 13.1.2, at least current as of this video. He also ran it on another phone that was on 12.4, and he pretty much says that this will work on just about any device covering iOS 12. Point whatever to 13. Point whatever. And even though he had said in the past he wasn't going to release any of these jailbreaks anymore, he did post somewhere, and unfortunately I can't find it now, but he did post it where he did say that this was going to be made public. He just wanted to clean some things up and do some updating and whatnot, and then it would get released. So let's see how that goes, and of course I will keep you updated here. And that'll do it for this week's episode, guys. You know I appreciate you watching. 
If you found anything here informative, useful, or just entertaining, or you want to show some love or appreciation to the channel, you know that the best way to do that is to hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to be notified whenever I put content out, which of course I will be doing during the week, make sure you hit the notification bell. As always, much love to everyone out there. It's a crazy world. Please be careful. Take care. And we'll see you on the next one.